So we're learning more about COVID as the pandemic progresses. And I think one thing that we've certainly learned through the most recent wave in Australia is that COVID doesn't discriminate and athletes can be affected uh, as can non-athletic individuals. And uh, the spectrum of, uh, of illness is that of a non-athlete, whereby those that are athletes can still get very severe infection. Um, and being an athlete doesn't protect you from severe infection. Um, and so we are seeing a wide spectrum of presentations from those who have no symptoms at all and may be picked up on a surveillance rat test to athletes who are very sick and requiring hospitalisation for a number of different symptoms. I think that the biggest factor is, is that of vaccination status and more of the sporting codes are now mandating vaccinations because of this fact that it certainly reduces the severity of illness. So um, over the last few months, as we've seen more cases in Australia with COVID-19 and particularly athletes, I think one of the challenges that, that athletes are facing is the, is the difficulty that they have in returning to their previous level of exercise and a real reduction in their exercise capacity. And athletes, whilst they're resting when they have COVID-19, may feel that they're asymptomatic. But then once they try and return to some exercise, they do notice that they may develop symptoms, which can be quite worrying for them. Uh, for example, this may be chest pain, shortness of breath or palpitations. Some athletes who uh, may monitor their heart rate may observe that their resting heart rate or their exercise heart rate increases quite quickly, which may alarm them. And these are things that they should be looking out for. I think it's really important that people who've had COVID-19 recognise that they have had a significant virus effect affecting their body and, and that they may not develop symptoms until they try and return to play. We recommend that athletes uh, have at least seven days after their last symptom before they try and return to play and at least 10 days from the time of diagnosis before they return to play. And here at Cardiology at the Mater, we follow a, graded, a graduated return to play protocol, um, which I've got here on the computer, but basically it is a stepwise increment through a graduated return to play protocol where we monitor things like symptoms, heart rate, and, uh, and we allow them increasing time and increasing volume uh, and workload of exercise over a period of seven to 10 days, provided that at each level they're feeling well and they're asymptomatic. And what I do is that I talk through the protocol with my athletes and make sure they understand that, you know, this is a slow process and they have been very unwell and that we just gently go back into return to play through this, uh, through this recommended protocol. If they have any symptoms at any stage, we do pause at that time and we may go back a stage or pause on that stage before we move forward. And of course, if there are symptoms, then we do perform a number of cardiac investigations depending on what the symptoms are. Um, and that's always at the discretion of the treating cardiologist as to, as to how the athlete should be investigated should they have symptoms and also whether the athlete is appropriate to return to play. Uh, it's important to acknowledge that there is a rare but serious complication of COVID-19 19, which is myocarditis, which is inflammation of the heart muscle. And that can manifest through some of the symptoms that we talked about, chest pain, shortness of breath and palpitations. And athletes who have myocarditis should not be returning to play for a period of months. And these are the ones that we want to identify with our cardiac checks. Um, and so we do a number of different investigations to help identify which of those, which athletes may be diagnosed with myocarditis and their uh, recommendations are tailored to their individual circumstances.